hope I've made my job a bit easier, right? So I'll try to get you my presentation a little quicker. I'll give you a brief outline on the presentation today. So first I'll speak about the conventions and protocols addressing GHG emissions, the IMO's work in addressing GHG emissions. And we'll look at some of the results from this work. We'll look at the CO2 inventory emission methods. And hopefully by that time, after those four points, we'll you'll understand better why we have developed the data collection system that we have. So let's start at the, at, the start, at the top. The United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. All right, before we even get into that, why are we all here today? We are here today because we have emitted enough greenhouse gas emissions to create an imbalance in the natural carbon cycle and carbon dioxide in our GHG emissions from burning fossil fuels. So this GHG emissions, carbon dioxide being a greenhouse gas, there's an imbalance in the cycle, which means that we are retaining use the bunker fuel figures and they use emission factors from the ship from measurements or theoretical factors arrived from the chemical reactions and also compulsory data collection system for fuel oil consumption on ships. So right now Fuel, con fuel oil consumption data is voluntary. It will soon become mandatory, right? So it's the first of a three-step approach in advising or implementing measures that analysis that the MEPC will do. So the first one is data collection, which is at the point that we are at right now. Then we will analyze this data, and the MEPC will do it. We will use it. To make further to determine if further measures are required for GHG re, um, reduction emissions and what these measures will be. So, on or before the thirty-first of December, twenty eighteen, Captain Singh touched on it. Ships of five thousand gross ton and above, which represents about eighty-five percent of the fleet, five thousand gross tonnage and above, in their ship energy efficiency management plan must give a description of the methodology you being used for reporting fuel oil consumption in accordance with regulation 22A. This data must be submitted to the flag state administration who will issue a certificate of compliance to the vessel. The data will be, ag will be aggregated, it will be collected and submitted to the IMO secretariat. Now, this will all be done under an on, 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 on anonymized data collection system. So, the extent of individual ships, the pollution, not the fuel consumption figures from these ships, should remain anonymous. This is what the data collection, or the proposed data collection, looks like. Right? So, it asks for specific information to the vessel, IMO number, the period or the year. So this data must be, must be reported for every calendar year, starting from 2019. The technical characteristics of the vessel, so they will look at the machinery on the vessel, the fuel oil consumption by oil type, um, and method used for collecting the fuel oil consumption. Distance travels on hours underway. So when you have a look at it now, Although this resolution was adopted in October last year, our pilot projects were piloted in around June, July, right? So we were on similar lines, we were thinking, so when you see our data collection, it's a little more detailed, right? It's a little more detailed, but you will understand now why we're requesting this data. So the data we're requesting, will feed into our two pilots, 
two or our two pilot projects that Mr. Walker touched on earlier or explained in detail, right? But we require partnerships which, so you see this slide for about the third time this morning. We require partnerships from all stakeholders in the maritime industry to make this possible, to collect this data. The data collection, the project requires active participation and support from the stakeholders involved in shipping operations within the Caribbean, establishing a reporting system based on e-portals, so we have already completed that for Trinidad and Tobago, integrating with existing single entry window available in Trinidad and Tobago and other Caribbean territories that is being used here. We also utilizing the e-portal established for the purpose of MTCC to participation of ship and extend the reach to the region throughout maritime administrations, ports, shipping agents, associations, and maritime administrations. And we also have the pilot apps, so the pilots are also supporting us in this initiative. I wonder when Mr. Walker went through this in full detail, right? We also have to make recognition again to the MSD. The MSD has issued a shipping notice and is currently mandatory as a pre-arrival requirement for ships entering to report this data. <clears throat> now this afternoon, I will go through this sheet in detail with, with you. But if you look at the digital template, right? So this is currently on TT Bisling. So the ships coming into to Trinidad and Tobago could access this template and fill it, right? It asks for vessel, general vessel information, the vessel particulars, on the propulsion system, the electric power supply system, energy saving technologies, the boiler system. So this data must be entered on this sheet only once, once the vessel enters the region, right? There's no need to replicate this, this, this data as the ship moves from port to port. And the other, but however, the fuel consumption data will be, will be entered every time the ship enters a Caribbean or a port in the Caribbean. So, this afternoon, we'll, I'll show you all, I'll go through this form with you all, and we'll get some feedback from you guys about it. <coughs> and, as Mr. Waka said, once again, we know climate change is real. Well, I hope most of us think it is real, right? It is real, it is happening, right? We need the support from the region to, make the, to ensure the objectives of this project are met and we look forward to the support. Thank you.